Hi, and welcome to Postmortem. This is a part of my show that is a short episode in which I try to examine what type of mass murder took place in the prior episode. I am not a criminologist, nor am I a forensic psychiatrist or a psychologist. And I am in no way trying to portray myself as an expert in the field. I do have a great interest in the inner workings of the minds of mass murderers, and I have done extensive reading and research on the subject matter, and these are the conclusions that I've made. I will be referencing Holmes and Holmes from their book, Mass Murder in America. I label Thomas Hamilton as a disgruntled citizen. Let's break that down. There is a group of people that are so angry and upset with the way that the world has treated them that they lash out with mass murder. Unlike the disgruntled employee who will go to the workplace to kill, the disgruntled citizen is so angry and unhappy that he will lash out to complete strangers, causing violent injury and death. In the case of Hamilton, who lost his position with the scouts and then was blacklisted, he drew the ire of the community because of his interest in inappropriate behavior with the young boys in his clubs as seen in his collection of photographs of shirtless boys in ill-fitting shorts. After two decades of perceived humiliation from the Dunblane community and his inability to be readmitted to the Scouts program, he wrote the Queen and other members of the government protesting his innocence and demanded some form of governmental action because his reputation had been damaged without repair. Without resolution, he went to Dunblane Primary School with four guns, entered the school gym, and killed 16 innocent five- and six-year-olds and their teacher. So I want to discuss the traits of the disgruntled mass killer. Motivation. The motivation for the murder lies within the killer, not an outside source. The perceived wrongdoings must be righted but the origins of it come from within his or her mind. The killer perceives that society or a person within that society has wronged him or her and that he or she must lash out with fatal violence of those people who are reminders of that society. In the case of Thomas Hamilton, he did not know the children or staff personally, but maybe he was trying to get back at the adults, parents, teachers and institutions such as the school, police, and the government, and to some degree the children, who he felt all wronged and rejected him. What better place for a demented mind to take out his rage than at a school, where he can cause the most pain and suffering and carnage? Anticipated gain. For the disgruntled citizen mass murderer, the anticipated gain is psychological, not physical or monetary. It is psychological to the point that the killer is trying to demonstrate what is wrong with society. He is forcing people to see his plight, even though the killer may realize that because of his or her actions, that he or she will no longer be able to bask in their glory over what he or she has done. The massacre will bring the person to the attention of the public and will realize for him or her a brief moment of national attention for what the killer believes is important. It is believed that they will have their 15 minutes of fame that will show the public what wrongdoings had been happening to him or her. I believe Thomas Hamilton achieved this perverse goal. Victim selectivity. In the case of the disgruntled citizen, the victims are selected at random. There is no personal relationship between the victims and the disgruntled citizen mass killer. Although Hamilton targeted the school, and the children and the staff, he didn't know any of them personally. The disgruntled citizen does not usually select a particular person because of a personal confrontation that occurred between the two. Of course, there are some exceptions, but not in Hamilton's case. Spatial mobility. The killer does not move around from one part of the country or another in search for victims and opportunities to kill. The person is from a community and will carry out the killings there. This is the case for most disgruntled citizens and definitely the case for Thomas Hamilton. Physical traits. The physical traits of the victims are not important to the killer, as is likely in the case of Thomas Hamilton and his selection of victims. So in conclusion, 
Thomas Hamilton felt disenfranchised from the people who wronged him and the society as a whole. Because of this perceived alienation, he resorted to violence. This sick bastard did get his 15 minutes of fame in the worst way possible by killing innocent children and their teacher. That being said, I will keep the victims of Dunblane in my heart and leave the mind of Thomas Hamilton. Thank you for joining me on Mind of a Mass Murderer. Take care. <laughs>